What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 35. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. I would like to give a huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com bsf to get 10% off your first purchase. As a kid growing up in southern Ontario, the presence of Sears Canada was everywhere. I remember every holiday season we would get a Sears catalog and I would circle all the toys I wanted for Christmas. So throughout my childhood I associated holiday shopping and Christmas season with Sears, and I remember visiting the store a lot. As I grew, however, I watched the slow decline which inevitably resulted in today's mess. But how did such a gigantic Canadian retailer, backed by its even larger parent company, fall so quickly? Well, it all started back in 1952 as a retailer specializing in catalog orders and mid-market suburban retail. The company was founded under the name Simpson Sears, as it was a partnership between the Canadian department store chain Simpsons Limited and the already well-established American company Sears. Both companies would have 50% shares and put up $20 million into the new company. And in 1953, the first Simpson Sears store opened, based on the modern Sears department stores already in the US. By the early 70s, the company was expanding rapidly, with a brand new corporate office in the heart of Toronto, and a major rebranding of their stores in 1972. The department store was now simply called Sears. With sales rising, by 1973, the company had officially crossed $1 billion dollars in sales. By the late 70s, a plan was set in place to merge Simpsons and Simpson Sears. However, before the deal went through, the Hudson's Bay Company had placed a buyout bid on Simpsons. The Hudson's Bay Company ultimately acquired Simpsons and sold their shares in Simpson Sears back to Sears Holding, allowing them to have majority control of the company. In 1984, the chain was renamed to Sears Canada Inc. Following this, the corporation announced a complete overhaul to all of their stores over the next three years. Sears Canada continued with operations, with sales dipping down drastically in the early 90s. By 1997 though, revenue began rising once again. Between 1998 and 1999, the company saw $650 million in total sales increase. By this point, Sears Canada was becoming a retail powerhouse. The company now had employed more than 46,000 people and had 110 stores nationwide. Sears Canada then reached its peak in 2001, with $6.7 billion in total revenue and 311 stores. 125 of them regular Sears department stores, the rest being other branches of the Sears retail name. The retailer was focusing heavily on what they saw was most profitable and what consumers identified with the brand, which was appliances, home furnishings, clothing, and catalog orders. Following the company's peak in 2001, sales began to slow down and drop year over year. Problems began emerging in 2003, when the company stated in their annual report from that year, quote, while pleased with our performance relative to some of our other peers in the industry, we were disappointed with our results. Between 2003 and 2011, the company decreased $1.6 billion in total revenue. The company was clearly seeing problems, and by June, Sears Canada had named a new president and CEO to lead the company. Formerly of Canadian food giant Loblaws, Calvin McDonald had a three-year plan to restructure the company to ultimately produce a steady, sustainable income. This began with laying off 70 Sears Canada executives in December. By the following year though, total revenue still dropped almost $300 million. Likely in an effort to combat the dropping revenue, the company closed and sold three of its larger stores. Its parent company, Sears Holdings, sold off a large chunk of its shares just to the point where they still had the controlling vote of 51%. This was a sign that even Sears Holdings, the geniuses who were in charge of running Kmart into the ground, saw that Sears Canada might be in a little bit of trouble. During this time, the chain also moved some of their product categories, including toys, to online only. By late 2013, the company announced they would be closing an additional five locations, including its flagship store in Toronto's Eaton Centre. Clearly, Sears Canada was on a downward slope, and the retailer's finances weren't recovering like Calvin McDonald had thought. By 2014, with revenue dropping another $560 million from the year before, McDonald had stepped down from CEO as Ronald Bower took the helm. 
Sears Canada ended 2015 with $3.1 billion in overall revenue. However, when calculating in all the company's expenses, Sears Canada lost $67 million. Something needed to be done internally to keep the chain alive. Ah, what are you doing in Toronto, Michael? I just came up to see how you're doing. Is Sears Canada going away? We're not going anywhere. You of all people should know not to believe everything you read in the papers. The company once again changed its CEO position, and in August of 2016, Sears Canada unveiled a new rebranding campaign. A new overhaul to all of their stores, which would debut in September. A new simplistic modern logo, which I actually kind of like, would replace the aging 1980s logo from their parent company. In the same year, the company announced they would be adding grocery sections to their stores in 2017 as a new product category to Sears 2.0. The year still proved difficult for the company though, as finances reached critical rates. By the end of 2016, Sears Canada lost $321 million. This was a huge drop from the previous financial year, and the likelihood of Sears Canada being able to sustain itself was constantly decreasing. In early 2017, Sears Canada did begin implementing Sears 2.0 in some of its stores. Although the grocery section idea that Sears Canada had been developing and putting money into never made it to fruition. Finally, the chain reached a critical point when on June 22, 2017, Sears Canada filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The company cited the decision to file as insignificant cash flow, and the filing would allow the company to proceed with operations. This would result though in the closure of 59 stores and the loss of 2,900 employees. And I know that you did your very best for Sears, and that you tried to help us to reinvent the company as part of this restructuring. All of your employment with Sears Canada will end today. By October 2nd, 2017, Sears Canada requested the extension of their protection, as well as close another 11 stores. However, it was clear now to executives that Sears Canada would not be able to exit its Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Their only choice now was to liquidate their assets. On October 10th, 2017, Sears Canada announced they would be ceasing operations, closing all of their stores, and laying off nearly 12,000 employees. By the 19th, all Sears Canada locations began liquidation through the holiday season ending in January of 2018. Malls have an interesting dilemma with all of these stores closing, as they're left with large anchor spaces that most don't really know how to fill. In September of 2015, the Sears, which later turned into a Sears outlet store, closed at the Seaway Mall in Welland, Ontario. Returning back to give me some insight from a mall's perspective on Sears closing is Mike Belcastro, president of the Seaway Mall. Throughout the store's evolution in the Seaway Mall, uh, how did the evolution of the Sears store uh, the, tra the foot traffic it would produce for the mall, how would that change over the years? The store, when it first opened, was a going concern because it was new to the area. Um, their traffic and sales stayed about the same throughout their entire term here. Maybe the last year we noticed a bit that the sales and traffic, uh, foot traffic, started to slow down. And I think the biggest reason for that was the lack of inventory or as they said, they were changing things like one week there'd be no TVs and then they were changing their clothing out. So I, I think that had a, a, an adverse effect on, on the chain at the end. When Sears closed its store here in September of 2015, was it a surprise to you? Yes, uh, we were talking to them about six months prior to their closing about uh, renovating and expanding here at the mall, actually to the point where we had preliminary drawings. So for them just to cease to exist really caught us off guard. Uh, so did the company ever acknowledge their financial struggles to you? Uh, no, we actually didn't even know they were closing. We got a call from the local newspaper telling us that one of the employees just had a meeting and they were told the store was closing. So that's how we found out. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming initially the, the closure of the store would have been scary. Well, could you talk a little bit about what the post-liquidation was like here? 
Um, they had a liquid like liquidation for about a month, and and then once they closed, <coughs> we noticed uh, a decrease in traffic immediately because we had lost one of our anchors, um, and I mean the whole time was how do we replace that tenant because tenants of that size are hard to come by and it was super closing so it was a double whammy for us right this year's store here was only uh, 40,000 square feet so it wasn't too large compared to other stores like Target right uh, how how difficult was it to lease that store I know that two tenants have come in recently from 2015 to now how, how difficult was it to lease we were fortunate with the Sears store, um, with our timing, because it was one of the few Sears stores. They only closed about three at that point. So we were lucky. So we did find two tenants to take the store. Uh, I think now with the full chain closing, it's going to be much harder to find tenants not only to fill your Sears, but also your Target. So there's a lot of real estate out there in the country to fill, and there's not enough tenants to, to achieve that. Well, you have a very unique perspective since you are, uh, I mean, you're coming from a mall and uh, that's where most of the Sears Canada stores are. Uh, what do you think is going to be a big problem that's facing uh, all of these malls that are going to lose their Sears Canada now? <clears throat> I mean, the big problem is finding another retailer to take that space. Um, you know, the average Sears store was between 90 and 100,000 square feet. And, you know, you have your targets that were 130,000. So the targets are still not filled, so it's going to be very hard to fill the Sears. And I mean, it's not like there's more retailers coming to the country, there's <laughs> more retailers closing. So I think it's gonna be a, a tough challenge for a lot of landlords, but I think you'll see a lot of different things happening, non-traditional retail, um, different uses for that space other than retail. Was the bankruptcy of Sears Canada a surprise to you? Uh, to be honest, no. I think we all saw it coming in the last two years. Um, there was enough information in the media about what was happening with the company that uh, you kind of anticipated that it was going to come. Sears Canada had a stock price of $34 a share at its highest peak in 2007. By October of 2017, their stock price was down to 5 cents a share. Sears Canada peaked in the early 2000s, emerging from its collaboration between two massive retailers from two profitable markets. The 65-year-old company built its way up to 327 stores, $6 billion in total revenue, and 50,000 employees. All crumbled within 15 years. Sears Canada is now liquidating all of its estimated $1.2 billion worth of assets and closing the remaining 200 stores. Seeing the gigantic mess that Sears Canada is right now, and seeing it unfold in real time, I kind of imagine Sears Canada corporate headquarters to kind of look like that one scene from Fun with Dick and Jane. Hey, can somebody tell me what the heck is... Hey, there's a fire! Somebody should... Anyways, much like the liquidation of Target Canada, Sears will be abandoning most of its anchor spaces in malls across Canada. It will likely be a very long time before they are all filled with other retailers, and the scars Sears Canada leaves will be left in the Canadian retail market for years to come. The abandoned stores are now just a reminder of the once powerful Canadian retailer. While just a subsidiary of Sears Holdings, the company who itself is on the brink of bankruptcy, I grew up with the chain fondly and will always be something that I remember going to as a kid. While I can't say I'm sad to see it go, I mean really, as a teenager walking around the mall, we would go into Sears Canada ironically and laugh at how awful the stores were. Wow, I'm really cynical. The company after all was a catalog mail order business, and its inability to keep up with changing market trends like online sales was just another reason why revenue dropped so rapidly. Its stores look so tired and depressing compared to others, with prices barely being competitive. With all of this, it was likely that Sears Canada's fate was inevitable. Sears Canada, though, genuinely was an iconic brand to Canada. It was once a great retailer in its day, and one that made its mark in Canadian retail.
If you run a podcast, own a business, create videos, or are looking for an online portfolio, you likely need a website. Squarespace is the perfect place to start one with their easy to use and extremely slick user interface. Squarespace has a wide collection of customizable templates, so you can easily and quickly build yourself a beautiful, professional looking website. With their year round, 24 7 customer support, you literally don't ever have to worry about being left in the dark. To get 10% off your first purchase, all you need to do is use the link squarespace.com slash BSF. I've actually set up my own website with Squarespace where you can go and request topics for upcoming abandoned videos. The topic that has the most votes from my Squarespace site will get its own video at some point. Anyway guys, my name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And thank you very much for watching. Yes. Yeah.